Do the scriptures support the common criticism of Aaron, the brother of Ammon? Let's discuss. Aaron and Ammon were among the sons of Messiah who went about seeking to destroy the church with Alma the Younger, saw an angel, and were converted. They went on a mission to the Lamanites for 14 years. Most of their experiences are set forth in Alma 17 through 22. This includes Ammon being a servant to King Lamoni, the miraculous conversion of King Lamoni and his wife, and the faithful efforts of Abish. Aaron's initial service landed him in prison, and he later taught King Lamoni's parents, who also experienced a miraculous conversion. Many have been critical of Aaron for one thing or another. From laughing at him for copying Ammon's approach, being a servant, to copying Ammon's teaching technique, to criticizing him for Bible bashing, to saying that Aaron is a model for what not to do in life and, Ar and Ammon is a model for what to do. Ammon's approach was to win the hearts, Aaron's approach was to preach. And you can always take an Ammon approach or Aaron approach. I think the most important thing to say is that there's a lot of context we are missing. Um, we don't know what Ammon said before he got pulled before the king. We don't know culturally or legally what's allowed as far as what you can say to a king. Could Ammon mm -hmm. have started preaching? And we also don't know who can be a servant of whom. You know, it's easy to just, just reading along because Ammon's experience with the king is first and Aaron ends up in prison. It's, it's easy to read into that. Aaron just copied Ammon's approach because it worked. But that isn't what the text tells us. Um, for all we know, they always had a plan because they started their missions together. Maybe they all had a plan. This is the kind of sermons we're going to teach. What do we do if we get arrested and pulled before a king? Well, let's, we can't preach to him. Let's just offer to be the servant and trust in the Lord. Maybe that was everybody's plan. And all that happened was that Ammon got in front of the king first. Well, there's so much we don't know um, about this. The only person who has all of the context, all of the cultural context, all of the content of all of the sermon, the only person who knows all of it is our editor, Mormon. Mormon is very clear. It's because Aaron happened to run into more wicked people. In fact, it tells us he goes to Jerusalem and you have Lamanites, Amalekites, and Amulonites, and it describes how the Amalekites and Amulonites, they cause the Lamanites among them to be more hardened. It's the Amalekites and Amulonites who incite the Lamanites to go attack the anti-Nephi-Lehi's, and they do almost all the killing, and none of them convert subsequently. So that's who Aaron's talking to. I mean, he's one of the most powerful missionaries we have in the Book of Mormon. I don't think the Lord is happy when people dismiss him and use him as a negative example yeah. after the tremendously faithful and inspiring life that he led. He is the one who was chosen by the people to be the next king. And he refused because he was so repentant and he was so sorrowful for the harm he had done as one of the sons of Mosiah with Alma when they went around destroying the church. He couldn't bring himself to take that power and authority and instead went to serve a mission where he got beat up and imprisoned. When they get out of prison, they're fed and clothed. So they're bound with cords, Ooh. naked. Starving. They went on their mission because they could not bear the thought that any human soul should perish. And the Lord tells their father that they shall have eternal life. Okay, so <laughs> right? this, the missionary that I might be picturing in my head as I'm imagining this story based on my personal experiences isn't Aaron. None of us know anybody like him, a missionary who's already had its calling and election made sure. This is incredible spiritual maturity. This, this is not Homer Simpson with a name tag on, just <laughs> bumbling around, copying his brother, like, here we are, presuming this to correct is, him. Indeed. To us, he does not stink. <laughs> well said. <laughs> One of the things, too, that I heard Aaron criticized for was for copying Ammon's sermon, opening the scriptures and, and doing the creation, Adam and Eve and Christ and so on. Again, that's not copying. That is that is the missionary message. Why wouldn't they have the same message? It's probably the same message they, that Aaron has been preaching all along. He didn't borrow it from Ammon. It's the truth of the plan of salvation. That reminds me of another point that Aaron was criticized for Bible bashing because... When he, when he gets to Jerusalem, opens the scriptures concerning the coming of Christ and uh, redemption through the death and sufferings of Christ and the atonement of his blood, which both, I don't see all this spell bashing, and second, it, it supports what you're saying that, as you would expect, he was teaching mm -hmm. the gospel of Jesus Christ before Ammon got him out of prison. Yeah, and not to mention, after Aaron gets out of prison, but before he makes his way to the father of King Lamoni, what does he do? He preaches and he has success. And we also see later on, after the Lamanites and Amalekites and Amulonites attack the anti-Nephi-Lehi's and then destroy Manihah and then are defeated by the Nephites, 
Many of the Lamanites remember the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached and are converted in the wilderness. Like, clearly, the text is not telling us that, a that Aaron was doing it wrong. Clearly. The text is telling us Aaron had a much harder calling. I'll also say nobody criticized Alma and Amulek for preaching. Nobody criticized yeah. Abinadi for preaching. He was in front of a king. He never once offered to be a servant that we know of. But um, Christ himself. Yeah. stood before a king. Herod, Pilate, Paul was before King Agrippa. Oh, and by the way, mm -hmm. there are other kings around. I mean, Ammon and Lamoni, they met up with the king of whatever that city was where Aaron was in prison right. to get him out. And there's no record of Ammon saying, hey, king, whatever your name is, I want to be your servant. Really, Ammon's experience with Lamoni is an exception. It's exceptional. In case we didn't already say it, one big difference is Aaron was teaching on the streets or in synagogue, and Ammon was carried bound in front of a king. Very different circumstances. Uh, Even if they were in the same city, and they weren't, but if you were, those are different circumstances. To whom in the synagogue do you walk up and say, I want to be your servant? <laughs> Does that even make sense? The circumstances are different for every person. Circumstances are different for every context, for every city, for every culture. So maybe instead of saying, you should be like Ammon, not Aaron, one could say, you should be like Ammon and Aaron by following the spirit in whatever circumstance you're put in. Yeah. That may mean serve when you feel to serve, yes. preach when you serve to feel to preach. Do something else if something else is given you by the spirit. Do the scriptures support the common criticisms leveled at Aaron? No, they do not. <laughs>